Hello there and welcome to the Amir Cup 2019 review show all in English here on Al Cass as we look back at both semi-finals just a few days away now from the final at the new Al Wakra Stadium. As always, I'm joined by former English Premier League players Nick Summerby and Chris Makin who will share with us their expert opinion as they analyse both games in detail and we can look ahead to that final. Let's remind you how they lined up for the semi-finals. So on Saturday the 11th of May, it was the Qatar Classico. It was Al-Rayyan up against al Sadd. Both games were played at the Jassim bin Hamad Stadium. And on Sunday the 12th of May then, it was al Hale, the holders. They won it last season, of course, up against al Salia, who finished third in the QNB Stars League this season. Both games kicked off late, 22.30. Doha time. All right, let's waste no more time, get straight to the action and to that Qatar Classico, the first semi-final. al Rayan versus al Sad commentary comes from Nick Summerby and Chris Makin. Feet. What a wonderful first opportunity of the game, and it went to Al Sad. Al Sad playing out from the back into midfield, and they, they ended up with an opportunity. As Kuki just seeing out the danger from Rivas, the ball has stayed in play actually, and Kuki does really well to get out towards uh, Tarek. Here's Salem under pressure from Tabata, that's better from Al Rayan. And it started, uh, this is what we want, a proper game of football. Ryan looking confident, looking oh. aggressive. Oh, no, 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 referee, think about it. Think about it. Okay, Tabata gets a yellow card for that. I think he's going to reach for... There's the error, just getting too tight to Bunja. Bunja overreacting again. He goes head-to-head -head with the error. Al Sad players a little bit precious tonight. This is the night for Al Rayan. Oh, he's gone over now. He's gone over now, Butcher. <laughs> That's a yellow card for Butcher. And a yellow card for Vieira. And this is really, this is really overreacting from the Al Sad players, aren't they? As Zuma switches off to Tabata. Tabata trying to go past Gabby in midfield and he slips by the Spanish midfield. It's a good ball through to Luca. Luca. Into the far post, and that's a good save from Sad. Wonderful counter attacking play again from Ariane, and the trouble stunned over for Al Sad as Rivas goes back to Maxud. Here come Al Sad down the other end, Gabby to the far post again. Good defensive, head, defensive header away by Vieira. Al Sad still under pressure. Akramafiv going past Saya. Oh, and there's the first goal of the match, and it's Assad back in the side tonight for Al Sad. And there is the hole. Bunger exploits the space as well. Gets his shot in, goes to the far post. There's something different, Max, who a useful pass and good running off the ball there by Luca. Goes down with a, a challenge from Kuki. Luca there, he's on the ball now, it's been taken quickly, just coming towards the edge of the box, surrounded by yellow shirts. Here's Tabata driving through. So it's a perfection there by Salem. Doesn't look like he. I think he's. I, I think he's already said he's. He's not going to be here, which surprises me. Here's Ryan coming forward. Oh, Luca, with a fine run. But once again, another good piece of defending from Pedro this time. Eventually realizes the danger, comes over, and just eases Luca out the picture. Wide then, Chris and right close was, to him. Go. Well, here's one for you then. Because in one of the Champions League games the other day, 4-4-2 happened. Right, and gone wait then a minute once he finished with Bunger, who's breaking into the box. There, cool. damn it, what a tackle that is. Uh, oh, he got that. He ran over, then went down, he's back up, Bunger. He ran over, went down, got back up. It's a fantastic tackle, it's what a tackle. Great run there by Bunger, it's brilliant, he pushed it past Ferreira, there it is there, there's Dami there with a fantastic tackle. Yeah. He does win the ball there, yeah, but just look there now, it's his reaction there from Bunger. 
It's going to be a penalty because he's touched his hand, hasn't it? He's gone down yeah. and he's not won it with the ball. That's Correct. going to be a penalty. If you're going by the rules yeah. there, yeah. He's not he's not won it with his feet, you see. So when he's gone in for the tackle, which he should have won, yeah. you know, he's missed that there, look. Correct. And then all of a sudden then it's hit his hand, which is Does going across the floor. First? No, that's a no. penalty, that for me. There we go. Made his man up quite yeah, quickly. Yes, yes, Give yeah. it. Penalty. He steps up and it's a poor penalty from Bunger. It'll go down as a save from Eunice, but he didn't have to do a lot to keep the ball out of the net. Play outside at some stage, maybe. Shavu with a corner, out swinger. Flips away by Dami. Balls back with Akram Afif. Goes with the outside of his right foot and it's. Head jobs in Pedro coming into the near post. It is at the half turn. Shadowed by Gumu again. Back of a feed, back to Xavi. Xavi inside Juma. Could be a chance here now for Alsad and a wonderful save from Eunice. Great play from Alsad. Wonderful pass. <laughs> wonderful skill by Alsad in midfield. He's got that in the locker. The Alsad midfielder. And this is a wonderful. Oh, this is going to be some goal. No, it's not. Asad comes racing into the far post just to try and put the. Starts it off by Asad in midfield. Look at this. Living inches there, Asad have got the second goal. Yeah, they just move Pedro to right back on the ball. see him centre half. Bonja, ball spun up into the air there, gets his eye on it, and it's a wonderful clip to the far post towards Xavi. Here's that come a thief, and Al do somehow misses. For me, <laughs> how's he managed that? Everything wonderful. The ball goes to the far post. A thief blasts it straight across the face of the goal. There's a ball through to Bunger. Wonderful first touch to bring it down. Then he goes to the far post. Well, Xavi is the ball by Akram Afif right across the goal. There's not much for the Ryan fans at the moment to sing about, but here's Abdul Kareem down the left hand side. Oh, chance, Xavi! What a block from Maxu then. Vieira now over the top towards Sebastian. Wonderful ball, wonderful run. Sebastian just about to pull the trigger when Pedro came out of nowhere. See some wonderful defending by Al Sad tonight. Al Sad, and here comes Pedro forward with Akram Afif. Akram Afif to the far post towards Bunger. Wonderful defending from Sayer. Oh, what a ball through to Abdul Kareem. Abdul Kareem, Abdul Kareem! The pressure from Maxud in the end. Didn't look comfortable taking on with his right foot. Early release from Sad. Sets Al Sad on the attack. Here's Bunja. Coming through to his left. Al Hedu to his right. Xavi in support as well. How many step overs that was, but it falls kindly to Al Hedu who clips over. The oncoming Eunice, but the goal's disallowed, and once again, Al Sad can't get that second goal. Just put it out wide. I'd have to drag him off me for that. I would do it. Uh, he comes, oh, he's going hey, straight away. Here we go. Xavi down the other end. Sets up Abdul Kareem. This is surely going to be. No! We cannot get the second goal. <laughs> They're still hanging on Al Ryan somehow. How have they kept this down to 1 0? Al Hidus now sets his shot on. Oh, and again, another chance. He's offside, anyhow, in case Bunge but He's down there with the tackle now. It's with Xavi out the right hand side back to Bunge. You know, Bunge's going to get an opportunity shortly. Xavi cuts his side on his right foot to the far post to Al Hidus. Oh. Al Sad, just to batter into Rivas. He's trying to squeeze one through to Juma. Juma to the far post. Chance to batter. Throughout the season, it's usually five, six, four, and in it, they usually rip sides apart. There we go. Here's Rivas. Unfortunately, no goal. Kuki getting back there and gets in front of Rivas. Sends, he nearly sends the ball past. Bunge now. Akram a thief. 
Looking up back and feed back to Wu Young. Wu Young! <laughs> they keep two. It's not a force there, no, it's time for change it, even it, with four attackers on the pitch. It's just time for change it, right, and it really is. They're a million miles away from Al Sad. Oh, wonderful play by Bunja. Bunja to make it two, and finally they get the second goal. You know, just watch here now, it's. Here he is here now, he just twists and turned too far, too easy beating the defenders. Then all of a sudden he just slides it past the keeper to pretty much end Ryan's season. And it looks like Al Sadr going through to the final next week at Wacker Stadium. Silver off from Sod, punch out for the corner. Rivas now, time running out for Al Ryan, but Sebastian maybe get one back here. Oh, that's a good save off the line there by Kuki. Squeezing past Sadi goal, Kuki gets back, plays off the line. First of all, uh, we have to say thank you for the fans today. They support us very well. It was almost full from Al Sadd fans. Uh, the match was very, very difficult. You know, as a cup match is always difficult. Uh, even you are, you are the, the champion of the league. Even you play against a not high team. Today we play against a very, very good team. It's like Ryan, so it sure will be a difficult match. Uh, thanks God we won this match. Uh, and inshallah, we will win the final, inshallah. We will win the final, inshallah, on the Al-Wakra Stadium. Very impressive victory by Al Sadd. That puts them in the 25th Emir Cup final out of 47. Not a bad record. They've won 16 of them, so they'll be trying to make it 17. That could have ended up about 8-0, that game. Uh, Chris Makin, yeah. it was pretty dominant by Al Sadd. It was, and you think to yourself, who's going to stop this Al Sadd um, team at the moment? They, they seem pretty unstoppable. There was a 20-point gap in the lead between these two sides and it showed in this game. They really are. Al Ryan have just fallen away since the last time they won the league and Al Sadd are so far in front now. And it, they just couldn't get the second goal though. It was absolutely incredible. T uh, chance after chance uh, went away and they just couldn't get the second goal. When they did, it, you know, it was game over because Al, Al Ryan were not in the game at all. Uh, just in, in a general picture about Al Sadd, Nick, they, they've grown a lot in the last three and a half years since Jesualdo Ferreira arrived, Xavi arrived. Remember, there was a lot of expectation. We were like wanting it to happen straight away. And well, hang on a minute, you know. And then it was that first season, they didn't win anything. You know, well, Al Sadd have to win something. And then it started to happen. And then last or two seasons ago, last season, uh, not last season, two seasons ago, the Emir Cup. Then the Qatar Cup, and then obviously last season was De Hale with rampant. But it's been a work in progress, and, and it's gone the right way. Yes, it has, yeah. Uh, I think one of the main driving forces has been De Hale. Uh, De Hale's standard, let's look at that, how wonderful that's been. So they've been trying to catch up with that. Obviously, with the manager, he's a very good manager. Uh, he has made a big difference all the way through. And I just think even, even last season, I thought the business they did this season, just to add a, a bit more experience into the side there, and that's made the difference really for them. But with those two going up against each other, they'll always drive each other, these two. You know, that's why the final's going to be as good as what it is. Uh, it could go either way because of the quality. They, they stand out, those two. They're totally different than anybody else in the league. And we know that Xavi, of course, is now hanging up his boots. It's retirement for him. Mm -hmm. But one of the key players has got to be Baghdad Bunja and, and his goal-scoring exploits. Well, that you know, would have been my him. answer to your previous question there. Yeah. You're thinking it was a work in pro progression. But the, last year, they just missed Bunja. They might, yeah. you know, with Bunja, you missed about 10 or 11 uh, about yeah, ten he, games. He, so if he, he plays in those games, September didn't he? Early going goals. off his goal-scoring record this season. If he played last year, they might have won the league. Yeah, if he well, played in those games, tiny margins, yeah. wasn't it? And yeah. The season before, the uh, Bunja was there. Um, was it his first season there? Yes. So it wasn't really bedded in, was he? But no. You know, Bunja's been the difference. But keeping that consistency now and of course driving through to the final. Yeah, but you'd have to say as well the FIFA as well. Yeah, it's, those, well, it's not just the one yeah, of them, yeah, is it? Yeah. Really, I mean, it, they've, they've yeah. overshone Al Haidus. If, if, if that, and, Al, and we know how much we think of Al Haidus, but the yeah. FIFA as well. It's those two. Well, when he came in, Jesualdo Ferreira was trying to sort of just wrap him in cotton wool a little bit and saying, "Well, don't expect too much." Mm. Everybody was expecting, but he delivered. He, he couldn't do any more. Really. Do you think he he's overachieved? No, he no. Gone from th about was it two or three goals? The season with uh, last season, mm. and now to 26, he's just exploded this 
You, you issue, talk about a FIFA. Yeah. I think you, you have to be careful with him because he's a youngster. Yeah. You've got to for the World Cup. But at the moment, I mean, everything's fantastic. It's just interesting the path what they're going to do with him. Do you, do you do you put him out to a European club if they're interested? Does he have a chance in the Premier League? Do you keep him here? You know, they have to just you have to look after him because he's special. You know, he's a, he's a player. He really is. Right. Let's just uh, pick the bones out of this a little bit. Uh, and from this game, you, you've both put pulled out Assad's goal. Let's, let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Nick, you yeah, take but, it away. And a little bit as well of Gumu here. Look at Gumu. You know, this is it, this, there was a lot of diving in the game yeah. and he's paid the price for it. And then once you make a mistake <coughs> against outside, it's all about a fee fair now. You know, getting on the outside, very quick player. And then obviously there's Assad there. He knows where he is. Uh, you know, you, you've got someone across the near there and he knows if he just pulls it back for, for Assad. But that, that's a really disappointing goal. It's a great goal from um, Al-Sad's point of view, but from Mal Ryan, you know, when Gumi goes down there on the edge of his own box and it, and it was happening right throughout the match and I was so frustrated on the evening as well, you know, more or less playing with ten men, Al Ryan on that, because Luca was just more interested in diving, getting players' butts, having a go at the linesman. I mean, when I played at Sunderland, sorry, when Nick played at Sunderland as well, we had a skipper there, a captain, sorry, called Kevin Ball. Now, we would have got grips at, at half-time in the changing room or certainly told on the pitch, you're not pulling your weight, stop concentrating on the game and do your business here. Come alive in your mind and, and do the business on the pitch. He's, he's, he's concentrating on the linesman, the opposition players, trying to get him butt, diving on... Well, it's a distraction then, doesn't it? The whole and and when, he, when he does do something good, he looks a good player. <laughs> But for 90% of the match, he's not involved. So you're down to 10 men against the best side in the, in the, in the country. You haven't got a chance. You think he can get away with that with Roy Keane, for example? There's another name for you. You think Roy Keane would have that? No. Do you think he'd have, do you think he'd have uh, Gumu there, not going in for a tackle? Yeah. Just do what you've got to well, do. Well, is a legend here. Why, why is Tabata not having a go at yeah, Exactly. Yeah. Good point, good point. Ali Assad, though, a word on him. What a great team play again. It's this... It's this it's the, OK, well, now we're going to talk about something else. <laughs> uh, great movement here, Nick, and Xavi passing. I mean, this is just we're just trying to tee everything up, really, for what, what we expect in the final. I mean, look at that for a pass there from, from Xavi. Uh, this is what they do, they carve uh, situations up very easy. Here's a sad here now, look at this here now. What are you doing? There's a bit of space in front of you. He glides past people very, very easy. But just watch this for a bit of football there now. This is what they've done all throughout the season. Yeah. You know, and it's wonderful, wonderful Incredible. football. It's... Uh, that's why they are the champions. They, you know, they're very, very good at that. That's where they've improved at that. The passing is, is fantastic and creating those situations. Let's just go back to Ali Assad a moment and, and that spirit within the team because he's a player who gets pulled off all the time. I mean, you yeah. know, <coughs> tongue in cheek, we, we have a little bit of a go about it, don't we? We always get to laugh and say, yeah. you know, here he goes, Rizwaldo Ferreira's pulling him off again. Yeah. He doesn't care. He still goes out there. He gives it 100%. Always seems to make an impact in the game, whether he's coming off or whether he's coming on. You know, t t in the last ten minutes, he's done well um, to keep his head. Really, I would be, if I was him, I'd be really uh, disappointed. But like you say, it doesn't really show in his performances. I like Assad. I still think he's got a role to play with Qatar and the national yeah. team because he, he, who does he remind me of? Uh, Jack Wilshire, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. left-footed player, easy on the eye, can go past people in midfield. There's not many people can do that. They're all passes, aren't they? He's got a little bit of a dribbling ability there, but. I still think there's a, a place in that squad in 2022 for him because he's a really gifted uh, midfield player. Uh, let's talk about Xavi uh, again. Then we saw him there, we, we, you know, getting involved in the passing. Do, do you think that that slick passing at Al Sad has that been a product of Xavi arriving at the club? Without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely. I mean, that's what his game is all about, you know. And having someone like him around, in, you know, in the in the dressing room, training. You know, I remember when he first came and, and, and people were a bit eager and they didn't understand that all you got to do is just make the runs, time the runs and he'll find you. And once they got to understand what he's all about, everybody's, everybody's game from that. You have to, you know, but it's not that, it's what he brings as well. You know, he, 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 these are all these are ultimate professionals. You know, it's not just looking at somebody you think, well, hang on, he's had it easy. Not at all. He's worked very, very hard. He's still doing it now, and he's enjoying it as well. So once that, once you have someone like that <coughs> who's been as high and been as one of the best players in in, in the world, and they're working hard and doing the, and the, the, the hard stuff as well, you know, that 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 goes that spreads to all the rest. Have of the a look team. at the warm-ups before when we go to do the final in our wacker. Have a look at the warm-ups or anything they do outside. He's always the one leading it mm. with um, uh, Gabby. 
the two Spanish players that are leading everything, forcing the pace of everything. Do, do you think Xavi has now set the blueprint here in Qatar? I'm just thinking, you know, he came, he played three seasons and he mm. played brilliantly in three seasons. I wonder if, if, if his, he, he, what he's done is the blueprint and that, he, I don't know whether he could sit, does he sit on the board or should he sit on the board with the QM? It's conflict of interest, obviously. Raul, say, did, Raul had a similar impact. Yeah, he, he, did, did. he did, but should they, should they, would it be an idea to get more players like Xavi? I, I know that's difficult because he's one in a million and he's won everything, but that kind of standard of player who you know you can keep here for a little while so you can see some continuity, mm -hmm. people who are going to contribute for, if not two, three, certainly two seasons. And, and you see the improvement then throughout the league, because at the moment, yes, we have got that sort of top two and then another three, and then we've got the others. Listen, I mean, he, he's gone to one of the best clubs. It is difficult yeah. if you go to a graffer, if you go to a... I mean, Nigel, <coughs> Nigel, Nigel yeah, true. it's difficult there. I don't think you'd have got the same impact with him. You know, he has a good players around him. Uh, international players, you know, you move any of those Schneider, any of those into Al Sad when they first come here, and I think you probably get the same type of impact as that there. Al the, have never done it, have they? No. They've brought a real big name in, have they? Well, El, El Arabi is probably, is probably the biggest name they brought in. He was yeah, not uh, low, we're low, talking, low, we're, yeah. talking, we're talking about like Xavi. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about that, a Xavi yeah. and things like that, you know. Uh, they've never really pushed for someone like Xavi, have mm. they? And they've dominated the, yeah, the league. There's a big rumour next year, Ribery might be coming, if I'm right by saying that. It, it, there is a rumour. There's a few biggies no so floating about. Club, don't know yet. Not I can't, involved, I can't. You're not involved in that deal, are you? No, I'm, I'm on your zone. <laughs> <laughs> even though there's I'll a lot, apparently, that's it, only what we're hearing. There's, there's going to be yeah. a lot of players coming in to, to make it even stronger. So, uh, yeah. Let, let's be let's just throw it forward then to, to the final now. What are you expecting from Al Sad? It's, this is their comp this is Al Sad's competition. You know, as I said, 25 finals out of 47. 16 victories, More this would be half. 17 if they would win yeah. it, you know. This is where Al Sad come alive, Xavi finishes playing, picks up another trophy. It, it is sort of part of the script, isn't it? Not for me, no. I think De Hale are the ones. De Hale are going to finish it off. For me, De Hale have something over Al Sad. You know, they will test them. Yeah. You know, either way, it's going to get tested for, for, for both sides. I mean, you've got to think of the last game where they were leading De Hale and Naji got the home goal at the end. You know, they, they, they are up for it and they feel that they've got the better of ourselves. Whose who's defence is stronger? Attacking wise, you, you, you know, you don't worry about I think, it's equal. I think it's equal. It's pretty equal. Ben Benatia was, yeah. was, you know, was another interesting move that came halfway through the season yeah. to really strengthen Alda Hale. Before that, maybe you would have said Al Sad. Misham, Basham, um, whatever you want to call him, he misses the final. Yeah, don't give them all away now. We'll talk about that in a minute. I'm just getting excited. <laughs> yeah, well, because we already, you know, you obviously know that Alda Hale, well, you know, unless you've been living on Mars, you, you know, you know that Alda Hale are in the Defense final. Defence is key, then. Defence is key. So what we'll do now, what we'll do now yeah. in, in, in the run of the programme is we'll show you uh, how Alda Hale got to the final. Because in the semi-final, they were up against Al Salia, who themselves had a fantastic season, remember? Sammy Trebelsi, he picked up a, a special recognition award at the QFA Awards. They finished third, which means that Al Salia will be in the knockout stages uh, of the um, AFC Champions League next season. So uh, that's fantastic for them, but they faced Alder Hale in the semi-final of the 2019 Amir Cup. Once again, Nick and Chris were watching. Takes his shots on early on. It's a tight angle, but he hits the target. You know, how do you know it could end up being a full game? You know, but anyway, we'll see second half whether he comes on. It is a free kick for De Hale just outside the edge of the box. Yeah, it's in a good position. Referee marking the spot there as Bell has just tangling with Ed Milson there on the edge of the D. Hisham steps up. Good block there, and it falls kindly to Montari. And Alda Hill take the lead in this Emir Cup semi final. Montari back in the side, volleys home the first goal for Alda Hill. Trebelsi's not going to be happy at all with the reaction of his players. The free kick he's taking, it hits the wall, spins up over the wall. The, re the reaction of the players is nothing at all, but there, just look at the reaction. Nothing there at all, and there's Montari with an easy volley into the net to make it 1-0. Just coming up to seven minutes into hell of leading this game 1-0. Friday 
Prince in the near post, flicks on, oh, and the women. Runs the ball, it's back with Match D, here we go, this is interesting, enter the box, here's Mode. Oh, Mode in into the box towards Abdulkadir, somehow the ball stays out of the net, he wants to come to the net, Abdulkadir, but that's great play from Al Salia. Abdulkadir being a nuisance there on Benatia, wins the ball back. And he gets straight into the box after that. Good play by Mode against his former club. Wonderful ball. And how does Basham, how does he look miss it? it? But yeah, it's Basham, great defending. Look, Basham, look, look. look at that for a stop wow. there. What a fantastic stop there. That's what we saw in the, the, the Asia Cup. Fifth looking to put the early ball in towards Montari at the far post. There's Montari with a wonderful climb. You're not going to stop Montari in those types of situations. Palmed out by Alcatel. Look at this for a leap. Nice touch by Madibo. Louise now. Skipper passes a long range effort. Always oh, rising over the bar. Wonderful play by Fifth off the hill. Setting up Moes. Moes turning. Ramos Moes going towards goal. Moes pulling it back to Butani lets it run. And Bill Shire to make it two. Breakaway goal by Alder Hill. Kills off Al Salia. Yeah, brilliant. You got to say as well, then well worked from Moes. Really shows pace down the left hand side, breaks into the box, pulls it across the face of the of, of the of the goal. All of a sudden Montari dummies it and there's that man at Milson there, cool, calm and collected, just to smash it into the net to make it 2-0. But this is what it's all about. Look at Moes there, beating Ramos, breaking into the box with pace, pulling it back. There's the dummy. There's Ed Milson to make it 2-0. It's looking like the Hale are going to be beating Al Sad in the Amir Cup final. Surprised Montani doesn't say that. Cross up, but lets it go through Ed. Milson slams it home. Ahead of all these fellow players, he's just waiting for some, some of the red shirts to make a move forward. Put the cross here, but Louise comes inside for the shot. That's the reason, really, why they why they finished in third. You what know, a ball! What a ball by Hisham, deep in his own half, and he thumps it forward and found Moe's got a great chance to make it free. Show you! Oh, he tries to dink it over Alcatel. Alcatel reacts with a good save, puts it out for a corner. Back to front again for Alder Hale. It's wonderful play, great play as well when it does come to Moe's. Just slides the ball through for, for Shoya. Shoya just tries to chip the keeper, but the keeper puts it over the bar for a corner. You just feel for Salir if they get another goal before the break to Hale. I think the tie is going to be over. And his Majdi just threading the ball through, gives it away far too easy. Matibu there just to pick up the pieces. He's got to be better service towards Abdul Kadir. To this game, looks out the hill. We might get the third goal. Shoya coming so close, does everything right with his shot. Goes to the far post, but just creeps by. These are all warning signs here for Mr. Trebelsi. He must be looking at this exactly what you said there, Chris. You, you have a goal scorer what plays up front for you, and you're just not getting in the service. Give yourself a little bit of a chance. This is Shoya just pulling it wide. They get away with it there, really, to be honest with you, De Hale. Dangerous on that left hand side. Oh, wonderful trickery, what a ball to the far post. It's great delivery there. And it's Moez. He had that free header in the first half from six yards out. Here we go again. Fabulous win play from a thief. Just up there for Newson. He fires one into the feet of Ed Milson. Lovely first touch from Ed Milson, one on one with Ballard. Cuts inside, here we go. Flicks it through to Shoya, keeper comes out to collect. Oh, that looked nasty then, you've got to say. you got to say, Ed Milson went down straight away. This doesn't look good at all. Even the Salia players are calling him over. I don't like those. No one near him. Oh, does he get his... His left knee just gets his studs caught in the ground, but he goes straight down. I don't like those ones. Goals. <laughs> oh, I'm feeding my hair. Too 
Two substitutes up against each other. Mahe taking on Musa. Mahe going to the far post. What a ball! Oh, what a miss! What a miss from Abdul Grace. Worse than the Moes one in the first half. Great play by Mahe on that left hand side. What a ball. It's absolutely inch perfect. Abdul Kadir coming in at pace. There's a fee been very, very effective tonight down that left hand side. Causes a problem once again. Look, here he is breaking into the box. This is brilliant play. Love it. Oh, it's on a plate. What's a goal? Montari gets a double on the evening for Elder Hill, but it's all about the wing play. Good old fashioned wing play coming from a thief. Drives into the box. Look at the pace. No one get near him. What's his delivery like? Right in front of Montari, just to, just to let him side foot the ball away. Cuts across Alabidi then. No chance through the legs of Ramos. Right into the six yard box. Guided home by Montari. Surely that's game over now. across the near post, goes really well, and another chance for now Salia. Fired over this time by Bowen. Both chances in the last five minutes have been set up by Mahe, does really well, just doesn't give up the chase there for the ball. Oh, what a wonderful touch, wonderful touch. Just can't get the hat-trick, can he, Montari? to Moes, Moes can he finish off this move? Good save by Alcatel again. A wonderful build up play. So again, yeah, Moes fluffs his lines. Referee checks his watch, blows the full time, and Alda Hale have done the business tonight in the Samir Cup semi final. Worthy winners in the end. Suddenly from Montari. Through Montari back in the seventh minute. Double that lead through Ed Nielsen just before the half hour mark. So, De Hale, they are the Emir Cup holders from last season. They've made it into the final. They will now face Al Sadd at the new Al Wakra Stadium. Of course, FIFA 2022 World Cup Stadium. Huge excitement ahead of that on Thursday, 16th of May. Now, Nick, uh, Al De Hale getting back to their best. I know you're, you're a big fan and you're happy to see this now. And to be fair, Rui Faria has not been there that long. Uh, so things are progressing quite quickly and getting back to what they were. It, was, they? Ju it was just their performance in the last game, that, that's all it was, it, it wasn't one of them vintage performances, that was that was, uh, was a really good performance. We wondered at the start Al Arabi wasn't playing, so Montari played and we got to say it's po possibly one of the best performances we've seen Montari, playing as a forward, you know, looking good touches, good in the air, great runs off the ball. So he has a bit of a di dilemma there whether he comes back Al Arabi, you know, so it was good. Uh, Shoya, sure, yeah, we'll look at him as well. Uh, they they looked solid and they, they, okay they are playing a little bit of a different way but it's effective. Mm. Uh, a word on Al Salia, a good season for them. Again, there was a golfing in class. They did have opportunities and I think yeah. when you're a team you like that, you've got to put those away. Uh, There's a massive golfing class before the game between the two sides. I yeah. don't know what we expected really from Al Salia. Did anyone expect him to win that semi-final? Probably not. Um, they were without uh, Tibby Kinnean as well. Who's had a major impact on their season in terms of goal scoring, but um, they created some fabulous opportunities, has to be said. I mean, they were always a, a, a step ahead, wanting the Al De Hale, but they created some goal scoring, good golden op uh, opportunities. Mm. And, and for, for you uh, with Al De Hale, how, how do you see the development there under Rui Faria? I mean, he hasn't been there, I, I know it's oh. difficult for me to say. Because he, I mean, I, think he, just, I tell you what, I think we're just trying to, um, I think we're just getting a little glimpse of the type of football that he wants. It's coming through now, but it's, it's nothing like uh, the football they played under Balmardi. So he's, he's had to switch it about. He, he's come in, he's, he's changed a, a number of personnel, he's got a certain way of playing football, but it's not as, what's the word, dynamic mm. as Balmardi's Alderhill team. Mm. 
they, they were set in stone, weren't yeah. they? You know, those passes it, it, inside the full-backs. And, 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 and with respect to, to all involved, and, you know, I think Rui Faria himself has had to readjust a little bit. You know, you think if, if, you've, if, you've, if you've been, if you've been yeah. under the sort of... under uh, Jose Mourinho for that long yeah. at clubs like, you know, Porto, Chelsea, Real Madrid, yeah. Inter Milan, suddenly, you know, you come to Alde Hale, it's a different beast. It's a different part of the world. I'm sure he's had to adjust as well. You know, it's both sides there, isn't it? It is, but remember when Laudrup went in after Fossati at um, yeah. Al Rayan, he went from they, went, they played with a back three with Fossati, he went to a back four. And they've struggled ever since, haven't they? But, 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 but again, there. there, there's a good example. Yeah. Fossati was a man of this region, wasn't he? More experienced. Yeah. Uh, Definitely, yeah. Michael no, Laudrup, uh, not so much. Yeah, but, he won the league with um, Laquia before that. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> yes, there's always did, flip yes, sides of these arguments. Okay, there's that there? argument gone. <laughs> um, I, ju I just think Rufery might do well at Alder Hale, but you've got to look at the decision that they made last summer. If, 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 you know, why did they change it? Yeah, it's cost a lot. The of football was incredible. I thought going into the summer, I couldn't wait to get back to see if they could go on and win the Champions League. I was sure they would win the Champions League. Listen, what they've done is they've freshened it up there as well. Uh, they've got youth and brought new players in. Well, they, let's, they, let's start off. Let's start with one of those now because Nam Tehi left. It's a big talking point when he left. He's gone to Al Sadi, he was injured. Shoya Nakajima mm -hmm. came in. His qualities, you picked them out now. And, and what we'll have to say now is exactly the same si size. And, uh, he, he's the same type of player, but just look yeah. what he's all about. He's one of the players where you can't get the ball off him. And he's coming into his own now. Uh, he's a good replacement for Nam Tehi. And, and, and let me tell you, he had to be. A good player because it made a big difference without him on team. But I like it. I like what he's doing now. He's getting to know his team, his teammates, and he's effective. But he's he, he's so much the same in everything. Yeah, he does. Got, he brings he, a similar energy. Yes, he? exactly. Yeah. So what I mean, what's the coach expecting from him next season? At least ten goals to go with that game. Yeah. To go with his overall game. Just needs goals now, doesn't he? Yeah. It'd be a good place to start in the final, and, wouldn't and it? A, and of course, you know, it was the consistency. That's what Nam Tae he brought, wasn't it? I mean, every well, I put, single game. And, you we, and we forget as well, Nam Tae's going to Al Sadd, so that's going to make yeah, them yeah, even stronger, that there, really. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. you'd have to put Nam Tae he up with um, Tabata mm. as the best players we've covered in the last seven years, seven seasons, sorry. Alta Hale, of course, uh, still, they, they finished, well, they haven't finished yet, but they're in second in their group in the AFC Champions League. They have mm. qualified for the round of 16, so yeah. it's uh, both Al Sad and Alta Hale, uh, they're progressing in that. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out because it runs up until June and then you've got the break. Al Sad will have a different coach. They have to put up, uh, put up with quite a bit, don't they, these players with the breaks? <laughs> it's yeah. constant, isn't it? Absolutely, a lot of them. Now then, uh, one thing that. Uh, Sort of stood out in this semi final was the uh, Alder Hale set pieces. Nick, we, we've always talked about this how important set pieces are, and this is a breath of fresh air. This is what the manager brings. We, we, when we were in the Alcas International Tournament, Real Madrid were doing the same thing. It's very difficult to mark because they cluster up and you can't stand with, your, with the guy you're going to mark. Mm. All of a sudden, just before the kick, they move into different angles. I like it. I think it's I think it's refreshing. <laughs> it's definitely, look, 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 and all of a sudden, and a chance on goal as well. Very difficult to mark, by the way. Yeah. We've been talking about this for ages. This is it. This is it again. It'll show you from the opposite side. You know, you've got to try things. You've got to you've got to do different things. You look at the goal what Liverpool scored against Barcelona. That's thinking outside the box. Think about things like that. Set pieces in tight games. Let's work on what we do worked on in the training ground. That's brilliant. That's going to come back. The reason why I put them there because that that that'll have a say that in the uh, makeup final. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. I'll just it off yeah, no, no, but it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, yeah. as a defender, how, how do you mark that when you've got a bunch of players that all sort of well, they, they, bunched they come up in like, like that? I can try and do it on the screen there. So they come in like that. You'd have to go that way with four players. Yeah. You'd have to go what's, what's to slightly say? zonal. Say, don't move. You're going near. You've got the near post man. I'm going there. Blah blah blah. Third and, and fourth. And, and don't like move. Switched don't, on one hundred percent concentration. You whatever pass. you do, don't switch over though. Yeah. Nick's got to stay first. First man. I'm in that spot there, uh, vice versa mm. with these two. It's a, it's a great idea because you, you only need a yeah. yard. If you can lose a yard, you can't get it back. Mm, it's, very, it, yeah. it's a great thing to do that. It's, it's hard to mark, you see, so I think that's a, that's a great idea. These are the, these are things what he's going to bring into the hail. Yeah. The first time I saw that was in the uh, Alcas. Yeah, Alcas it was on so the 17th. It was, uh, it was Real Madrid, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Started. Real Madrid straight again. We're thinking, what are they mm. doing? All of a sudden, they all just go. Difficult. It's a good, good idea. I like it.
And now then, uh, a wonderful play. He's had a fantastic season. He was instrumental in uh, Qatar's uh, victory in the Asian Cup. And that's, well, Hisham on his shirt, Bassam Al Rawi. Uh, yeah. This pass, it, it was just fantastic. He's got great hamstrings. <laughs> so Look at that. 66 metres. That's called uh, a ping. We yeah. call it a ping when we played. That's incredible. Fabulous. It's just a shame to see him go off the pitch at the end. And there's, you know, rumours that he might miss the final now, but he's some player. Again, that, you know, with him coming in, you know, and gaining confidence, that's another dimension that, that, that they have. Mendes used to be uh, their, yeah. ma their man for yeah. sort of the pinger of the ball, if you like. You know, he's moved on now to Garafa. Two sides of his game now. You saw the pass. I don't know if we're going to see it. Is it have we got the tackle? From off what? the line, remember his tackle no, on Mandel no, no, we didn't see that. No. He made a wonderful, it was the best tackle of the weekend, won it. So he's a great defender as well. And there was one in the first half when he went tight. So the winger stops him getting the cross in. And he can and take you don't see that from defenders And, and he can take free kicks. <laughs> as, no, he he did. Well, as, as he did in the uh, Asian Cup. So well, he scored there, yeah. yeah. Well, well in, the, in, the, his, in his final, sorry, guys, in yeah. his final, there's 13 players, over 13 players who played in the international. Uh, with the uh, that are going to take part, going to be a part in the Asian of Cup. So there you go. We got all. They're all on shell. All kicking right. each other. <laughs> How's it going for you? What do you like that? <laughs> I like it. I, I might like have it. that wrong. It might be eight. Right. Uh, you mentioned tackling. <coughs> One player who stood out with his tackling was Madibo. Chris. I love him. He's got the. T <laughs> you know, he's the smallest player on the pitch. But I'll tell you what, he's got the timing off to a T and. Very much like fo um, forward players, sometimes you can't teach it. He's got it. Yeah. He just he comes from what five yards away, and if he gets it wrong, it's a yellow card straight away. You know, well, he could and, easily and, get a red and card. And how many of the wrong ones do we see? I mean, you've got to be pinpoint yeah, he, he accurate. Even, but he's got this timing, and, yeah. and the amount of tackles that you see nowadays, you don't see that many. He's one that can do it. You can't, you can't teach that. I'm telling you, you don't see it nowadays. No. And I hope the time to do that in the final as well. Obviously, be, be a bit clever what you're doing, but do that. That's a problem, you see. Al-Sad won't be used to that, someone getting stuck here. And he doesn't care who it is. He doesn't yeah. care if it's Lecomte, the goalkeeper. Yeah. He'll go straight through him. He's not like, he's in the well, middle. That's, that's interesting, because one player who won't like that is Baghdad Bunja. Uh, because, you know, key for oh, Al-Sad. Wow. But Brilliant. Bunja, one thing Baghdad Bunja doesn't like is, is being wound up. <laughs> Nick, Nick was talking in the studio the other night. Said if he was playing against him, he'd be pinching him and in all sorts. You yeah. know, yeah, and and, and that's you Who know that could be a like key, key incident in, in, in a final like that. Who else doesn't like being kicked? Hates being kicked. Javi. Any type of touch, it's not allowed. <laughs> Javi. Javi. Yeah. He hates it. Yeah, mind you, Nick's it, just said it's, just it hard to, it's harder to get close to him, yeah. isn't it? Even at yeah. the age of 38, you know. Yeah. But, you, but you have to, you know, you have to do. They're not saying it in a nasty way. It's me versus you. I'm trying to wind you up. You, you, you can't fight. You're not allowed to do that. So I'm trying to put you off your game somehow, or other. And these little bits of details. Just trying to gain an Bungie advantage. Bungie is easy. You tread yeah, on his. That's all it is. No, it's yeah, but, lining, yeah, but all yeah. you do with Bungie, you just tread on his toes a couple of times, and he's ready to fight the world. That's cheating. It's funny, isn't it? Isn't it's cheating. It? No, just a little funny more that? side <laughs> of the it's funny. Not on camera then. Trying just to... a glance, that's all it is. All it is is like, let's get behind. Hey. Trying to gain an advantage for your side. I always remember Gianfranco Zola, of course, uh, with Chelsea and Italy and coached over here with Al Arabi. I remember one of the first chats we had with him over here and you asked about a, a dive or something, a particular, I can't remember what the incident. Mm. And he said, no, no, it wasn't a dive. He was just trying to find an advantage his team well you that's what you're talking about but you both see it in a different way you like to just have a little bit of a dig and he likes to have a little bit of a dive so what, what's the difference well there's not really when you think about it no like exactly that. so yeah. come on nick explain yourself well, i like it i, <laughs> I, I like, like your dive, i like your approach better for, for we don't like it, but a little bit of physical we'll look at yeah, the debut there being the a little dark bit art, physical so. is it a place for that in football the, but the only thing is there is he's playing a very he's playing in a game now which is if you make one bad tackle there, you yellow card, his game is finished then. Mm. So it's very easy. You can't do it, can you? Well, imagine if the final, if he does those three tackles in the final, it'd be superb. Yeah. It That'd will. make the final that. Absolutely. Yes. Eyes of the world watching as well. Uh, now, Abdul Qadir for Al Salia. Nick, talking about chances, and, and there were good chances. It could have been mm. a lot closer. And we've got to say, our pal <coughs> here, Mahir, came on. Excel's Yates player and many other clubs. Look at this for a delivery into the box. 
And this is what uh, Abdul Qadir is all about. This is usually in the back of the net. And this just told me straight away after, it's not your night at all. You know, mm. wonderful what you've done. You've finished in third, but it's just, it was a bridge too far for you. When, when he misses chances like that, uh, no, it's, it's just not your night. We made it 2-1 with half an hour to go. Yeah, you exactly. It, it becomes a different game then. Yeah. Uh, let's talk in another chance mode. Uh, it, it is another opportunity. I hear again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how he does this. This is so difficult. You would not believe that touch that Mahe has done there. A mode coming onto it against his former club. You think just hit the target. Mind you, it was 3 0 at the time. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, wonderful touch by Mahe. Now then, uh, talking about players uh, who, who make an impact, and for Alder Hale, the second he arrived at the club, uh, you could see he was something special. His father uh, won the World Cup with Brazil back in 2002. It's Edmilson Jr. and uh, Nick. His goal, something special. And you see, whether it's it's the build up to the goal that's more spectacular than the goal. Yeah, well done by Moez here. This is what we like in his acceleration. But this boy, this boy could win the game for them uh, on Thursday without a shadow of a doubt. He, he's a good player. He came in. Uh, it's a lot of weight on his shoulders because obviously he took he, he took over from Masatney, but he, he's a player. If you, if you watch him, if he ever gets the ball on the right or the left, he will. I'll guarantee you, he'll deliver. He'll deliver in either a shot or a cross, you know. And that's what the forwards should be looking at there. And he's a, he's a key player. Get the ball to him as many times as possible. Could be a, a great battle between him and uh, Abdul Karim. Uh, well, absolutely. I'd love to 100%. see that. Bad sheets yeah. on that one. Sorry. It's a famous cheating, thing. about cheating again. No, 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 I struggled a long, long time playing against <coughs> these, like an Abdul Kadir. Sorry, Abdul, Abdul Kareem. Abdul Kareem. Abdul Kareem yeah. And when they keep taking you, when they go forward, you mm. think you have to follow them. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd say, Ed Milson, you stay there and let's get the ball to him. When he goes forward, try and stop him from going, from, think, from going mm. forward and crossing. I think you're absolutely right there. You don't want to be running 40, 50 yards mm. back all the time trying to get back with Abdul Kareem. You can't. You're you, going to yeah. take so much from your... Uh, attacking part of the play, you've got to go certain. Uh, it's a bit of a, ga it, it's it's a, bit of a gamble because he could cross a ball, then all of a sudden it could yeah. be the winning goal. Yeah, no, but you can't be going like that. Yeah, towards it's your more, own goal. Do, yeah, but do you know what it is there? It's, it's more mental because if if he goes if he goes back and he, or whatever he under hits a cross and the ball comes straight away to Ed Milson, he will never go again then because Ed Milson will have three four yards yeah. on him. Let's hope his knee is okay. He went down uh, towards the end of the match with a, with a strange oh. one actually. There was nobody no one anywhere near him. Uh, he got up and, and he got back into the game, but you know sometimes yeah. those little niggles. I think uh, it was a fat lock, wasn't it? A what? It was a fat lock. Fat lock. What's that? It's just at the back of the bone. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Summerby, I'm sorry. <laughs> just made it up, never even heard of a fella. It's a B500. Of course you made it up, yeah. Um, but Abdul Karim, of course, you're talking about him there. No, just going back to Al Saad, you know, a player full of confidence, Asian player of the year as well. Yeah. Uh, it was, actually, he was fantastic the second he came on um, yeah. when, in, in, in the semi final. He just uh, gives so Al much uh, great balance to Al Saad. I want him to play in the final. I want all the top players to play in the final. There's no excuses, is there? Mm. I want to see Ab Ab Milson against um, Abdul Karim. I want to see Mendebo going through Xavi. Bunja, who's up against Bunja? Who's the two centre halves? Um, no, you're Benetier. Benetier. Uh, Benetier. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you know, Yassir. You know, you the top player. Come on, yeah. get into them. Yeah. I tell you, so for me, I, I mean, I, I, I think De Gea will win the game, and I think this will be the start for the manager. I just think it's, I think it's going to be a fantastic game. We well, couldn't ask for anybody. They're definitely let's going to be up for it, aren't they? Listen, they want to put it right now. Yeah. From what else have done, they've took their place by winning the league. Yeah. I think you're going to hear something back from De Gea. Uh, Montari, let's just uh, finish off with that goal. Brilliant, by the way. Absolutely. I mean, once again, a thief down this left-hand side. Look at the delivery. But this is where we want him. This is where you're going to earn your money. Yeah. You know, this is going to get you. This is going to. It's very important times for him now. You know, it's he's, yeah. he's, he's time now. One. You come off your injury. You know, you're looking like, like, like you're maturing nicely. You get, get rid of that staying out on the right and left wings. Get there and score yourself goals. You want to, you've got to be selfish. You want to be in that starting lineup when 2022 comes. And if you keep doing performances like that. You know, he's a very big guy, but he's good on the floor, he's fast, you know, he can, he's got a trick with him, he, he, his all-round game's fantastic. And I just think whoever's helping him at the moment, keep doing it, you know, because that was a good performance, that. Just being in the box, where does Al Arabi, where does Bunja get a lot of their goals? Just side-footing into the net there, you know, and that was a great performance, that. I know he may be, he may be going to start in the final. All right, saying it for, uh, sorry, no, yeah. we've been saying it for seven seasons. Yeah. Well, he's Finally, telling, that performance there, what me and Nick have been talking about, staying between the lines, down the centre, 
I mean, there was a ball that went in at the far post in the second half there. He rose, and all the other was slightly off. He, he must have rose about, I don't know, eight or nine feet. Yeah, know. There's no one anywhere near him. You cannot beat him. Yeah, it's got to be a feature of Alder Hills playing the final. Yeah, yeah. If someone can get to the ballot and just clip dink it, it back, up, yeah. just clip it up, you cannot beat him. <laughs> you can't get up He's there. He's like a basketball player. Absolutely right. OK, let's recap the results then from uh, the two semi-finals. So, that's what happened uh, on Saturday. Al Sad 2-0. Uh, they beat Al Rayan. Uh, in the end, it could have been a lot more. Al Sad looked absolutely fantastic in that. And it was Al De Hale, three 0 winners over Al Salia uh, on the Sunday. That's how the semi-finals finished. Which leads us on to reminding you when the final takes place. And here it is. It's Al De Hale versus Al Sad. 22:30 uh, kickoff. Our build-up is going to start a little earlier than normal. 45 minutes build-up. 21:45 our time at Al Wakra Stadium. Yes, it's ready. Yes, we'll be there. The first English language broadcast from the brand new stadium, and we are very much looking forward to it for what will be a showpiece final. I'm excited. We're we're, we're chatting on whether we're, we're going to get the. Get the metro to take us uh, to Al Wakra. Uh, we've checked into a hotel <laughs> just next to the stadium. We're taking in the, the World Cup atmosphere three and a half years early. We're near the souk, aren't we? We're near the souk. It, it, it's fantastic. I am. I'm, I'm ridiculously excited about it. Right. And I'm excited about the, the game and the quality of the game we're going to see. But what sort of game? And well, Nick's already said that it's going to be Alder Hale winning it. I think you might well, think it, differently. It's the final that we wanted because yeah. we want. Someone to push Al Sad. Yeah. Absolutely outstanding this season. We don't want to see him running away with all the trophies, do we? No. So, how the hell? I've got something to prove, like Nick said a minute ago. They've took their title, took their mantle. Well, uh, the last time Al Ryan did it, they come back very angry, didn't they? Uh, Al the hell? They've got that mentality at the football club. There's still a lot of top players there. And, you know, for, for, for these players as well, it, it, it is that cauldron of an atmosphere. It's a brand new stadium, yes, yeah. it's got that, but it'll be packed. It'll be to the rafters. His and Highness then, the Emir will yeah, be there. Yeah. Uh, so will other uh, very important dignitaries. And it's being televised. It'll be shown all over the world. The eyes of the world are watching. That must give the players that extra little bit of a, an adrenaline buzz. I mean, let's not forget, obviously, what, what the national team have done, the Asia Cup. I mean, it's been a wonderful season, you know, and that proves that the league is very strong. You know, and if everyone in the world is going to be watching this, number one, they're going to see the, one of the stadiums, obviously, for the World Cup. And obviously, you're going to see the two best sides as well. So everything is there to, to be put on show. If anyone's watching, you think, well, this is where we're at, and they'll be they will be surprised because of the quality of what you'll see. And obviously, the atmosphere. There's nothing better. It finishes off absolutely perfect. What well, has been a very well, wonderful season, to be honest with you. All right, uh, Nick. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you to you. Uh, look forward to your company. And when is it going to be? It is Thursday, the 16th of May. It's only a few days away. And 21.45 Doha time. They're late kickoffs, of course. We're in the holy month of Ramadan. 21.45 is when our build up begins at Al Wakra Stadium. It's going to be some show. We look forward to your company. From all of us here for now, goodbye.